Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele on the Ground podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by Mr. Aaron, the voice, not commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, for again, say what's up, Kahai. What's up? We're here, and we're about to uh, start our little Ukulele podcast. If you guys have any questions, we are live right now, so type in the chat what you guys uh, want, whatever questions you guys want answered. If you're listening to this podcast um, after it was done live, you can definitely write in, email in, or uh, call us at, at a, some kind of Skype number that we've set up or whatever. You can leave a voicemail, you can put your... Uh, Put your question online and we'll try to answer it as best as we can. If you guys want us to kind of check in um, on your form or check in on your ukulele playing, you can uh, send us videos as well. And we can do that. That's basically how this show works. We try to answer any and all of your awesome questions. Um, you regarding ukulele or not regarding ukulele. It's like, you know, preferably regarding ukulele, but you can ask us anything really. And uh, if we know it, well, we'll tell you the answer. If we don't know it, then you know we don't we don't know everything, right, Kai? Yeah. And, you know, we, we know some things, you know, but not, not everything, you know, yeah. you'd be surprised at the things that we do know, right? Yeah. <laughs> we or know like, a lot about very few things. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got like a question, right? And yeah. like, or we got a question a couple of weeks ago, but we we're kind of like saving it because, mm -hmm. and we told the person because... Yeah, like if we also, you know, we know like Mike would be yeah. the perfect person to answer something or yeah. another guest that we can get on, then we'll find somebody who like can yeah. probably answer your question better than we can. Yeah, too. we can answer your question, but it's not going to be as good as if Mike was here. You know, like that's that's just the way it goes. Like we can do it, but we know we want to give like the best answer possible for you. But and, I mean, if you need the answer like right away, let us know if you, you know, if you need this question. It's like, oh man. You know, my, my life depends on it. You need to answer <laughs> what kind of strings you use. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I don't want this person's life to be in danger. And I'm like, ah, oh, H-E-X-A-Q strings. <laughs> or, you know? Yeah. So whatever it may be, just let us know. Yeah. Right, Kahai? Mm -hmm. so, okay, cool. So let's get started. What's the first question, bud? Yeah, we got this question from Kate. And they're saying, uh, I'm planning to go to my first in-person jam this weekend. Ooh. I was wondering if you guys have any tips. I've been playing for about 18 months, mm -hmm. but haven't played with uh, others yet, other than a few Zoom jams. Mm. I mostly play my low G uke, but considering it is mm -hmm. likely the majority will be playing high G, mm -hmm. would it be better to bring my high G uke? Yeah. Okay, well, it seems like you got a case of uke jam anxiety, you know, like it's it's totally normal, but you just have to know that like ukulele groups in general are like the most welcoming, most warm yeah. people possible. Like you don't even know, like it's once you go in there and once you, you jam a few songs, you're like, I have no idea what I was worried about. Because really all the things that you're saying and stuff like low G and all these things that really play with people, all that gone after like the first like three <laughs> songs like seriously the ukulele community is so warm and so welcoming and so great and i don't even know which ukulele group this yeah. is and i'm it already sure matter. it doesn't matter yeah. you know like i've never gone to an ukulele club or an ukulele group and they're like hey hey you in the back wrong chords or whatever you know? like, <laughs> wrong strumming pattern or whatever maybe i've never ever ever experienced that if you guys have ever had any of those yeah. experiences let us know because those are rare you know like yeah. i'm not saying it never happened but it's pretty rare <laughs> every all it's like it's just funny to think about like mm. somebody in a group like you going to a group and you bring a low g and then they're like whoa 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 <laughs> only high g's here please <laughs> fix their ties <laughs> <and> <laughs> <G> maximalists <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know but if you, you want to play low g go to that low g ukulele club <laughs> yeah. across the street that starts at seven this is a six o'clock group you know like it's never like that and um and, and and we're laughing and we're, we're because really the ukulele community is so welcoming i mean honestly like if you just go in there um introduce yourself and let them know that this is your first time you know playing with a group and stuff you don't really know how it goes um i'm sure someone will share their music with you and just kind of show you the ropes and stuff but really just sit down and start jamming don't worry about your you know your ukulele i guess as long as you're in tune but most of the time that doesn't matter either yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. there's so many ukulele <laughs> groups that are like everyone's playing all sorts of tunes today 440 but, 38 39 41 42 like all good yeah and I'll, i would say too like uh you know like i understand if you just want to bring one because mm -hmm. you don't want to worry about two yeah. but even then you can 
if you can and you want to, you should just bring both your ukes and yeah. like maybe for one song you'll play on the low G, one song you'll play on the high G, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but be pre- be prepared to talk about those two ukuleles, so like because yeah. <laughs> no matter where you bought them from, no matter what brand, no matter what, and be prepared for people to be like, oh, can I see or whatever, because. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like yeah. we said, super warm, super welcoming. They're going to be like, oh, that's a, such a nice ukulele. Where'd you get it? Or how much you get it for? What kind of brand is that? What wood and stuff? You know, I mean, you don't have to answer all those if you don't know. But yeah. just be prepared for, for people to be like, ooh, you know, because everyone is, it's it's such an amazing time. I'm so, I'm so stoked for you, to be honest. If this is your first time <laughs> going to an ukulele club or ukulele group, I am so stoked and so happy for you because that's, that is really like a, a group of people that you're gonna be like, man, I should have done that way sooner. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it was if it was possible, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like uh, the past, yeah. If over the past eighteen yeah. months, right, you probably <laughs> didn't have very many yeah, that's true. chances that's true. to to meet up. But I mean, usually mm-hmm. when you it, just mm-hmm. ukulele players in general, no matter where we've gone, yeah have been pretty like unpretentious you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> like honestly, they yeah. um, the <laughs> if anywhere that you go mm-hmm. ukulele players it seems like they don't take themselves seriously <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> just no. in general yeah. like you know i'm sure there are a few that really do yeah. like you know but but if you're meeting a group mm-hmm. like chances are that 99% of the people in the group don't take themselves very seriously no. just because they chose ukulele as yeah. their, their main instrument. So. Yeah, it's not like some guitar meetup or some, you know, like <laughs> drummer's bass yeah, meetup. Yeah, there, there are factions yeah. within guitar and you gotta be aligned with a faction. Yeah, this one is just like, just go, just play. Like, if you don't have the music, I'm sure someone will share with you and then you can ask later, um, you know, after the, uh, after the group session, like, where can I get music or what music are you guys using? and stuff just it's super friendly don't even worry about it, it yeah and, and you're like saying earlier like mm-hmm. be ready to talk about your geek right yeah i feel like in the guitar community you might like check out a guitar and they'll be like oh you're playing that brand of guitar <laughs> or like oh yeah you're what what strings are you playing oh you're playing 52s ha i'm playing uh, you know 56. <laughs> and it's like oh okay but like, even if they ask you, right, like, oh, what brand is that, or yeah. what wood is it? Yeah. And you just like, you're even like, if they never heard yeah. of it, it's like, oh, where did you get that from? <laughs> <laughs> or, or even if you you don't know, right? Like, yeah. you're you're like, well, I, I don't really know what brand this is. I just went into a music store and I picked it up. Uh-huh. They'll yeah. probably be excited to talk to you yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, and they'll be even more excited if you kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, return it too and go like, oh, what, oh, what is your ukulele or what ukulele are you playing? <laughs> mm-hmm. Then they'll be like, oh, yeah. I'm playing this ukulele and I got mm-hmm. it from here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's pretty. Even if you have the same ukulele, I guess especially if you have the same ukulele, like oh, look, yeah. look at the twinsies, look, <laughs> and like kala, whatever. It's not like oh, just a kala, regular kala. I have a kala elite, or you know, like, it doesn't, it's not like yeah, that. Yeah, you like, never, you never really hear that. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there, you know, there there has to be yeah. like people who just want to be grumpy in mm. every group or whatever. But yeah. Yeah, it's it's probably very rare yeah, that you'll find it. Few and if you far between, yeah, if you go to a group and you run into one person like this, probably talk to other people in the group, and the other people will be you know great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah, just don't mind him. He's just yeah, yeah, that's the guy we get. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah that's the guy. He's, he was a guitar player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's really 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 cool, and we're super excited for you because just. Just go there and have fun. Honestly, like leave your worries out the door. Don't worry about your low G. Just go in and uh, you know ask what the protocol is and stuff. Like you know, do you um, just sit down and just do what they do? Really honest. Mm-hmm. Like honestly, that's the best thing you can do and just go with the flow because that's really what ukulele is. And you're gonna find very quickly that it's just like also oh, we just pick a song and we just jam for like two hours yeah. or whatever you know and you said you've done like zoom jams and stuff it's exactly the same way you know like um I- i've been to a couple of zoom jams and it's mostly like you know people like either leave like what you know what uh what, what to jam and stuff I've, I've been to lenny's one and um you know i've been to ones where like it's kind of like open mic style or like okay cool who goes next or whatever so just see what the protocol is and what they do but be like a fly on the wall, you know, in the first like maybe half an hour just to see what everybody's doing and stuff and just go with the flow. 
That's the yeah. best. That's the best thing to do. I would I would say that I'm like the type of person that mm-hmm. if I went to like a jam or something, mm-hmm. I would just Absolutely. like you know go into wherever and I would just sit down and I would just like watch everybody. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't like go right up to people. But we've been, even uh, talked or we've been parts of groups or we've participated in groups and stuff where like you. I think this has happened to me, like, I think in Colorado or whatever, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm sitting down and I'm just like, I don't even have a uke, so I'm just like watching everybody mm-hmm. else. And then somebody comes up to me and they're like, oh, hey, what's your name? You know, I was like, oh, where are you from? And they'll just try to <laughs> be friend, Like, they'll see you, right? And yeah. be like, oh, I'll welcome that person. And it's not every, it's not guaranteed in a group, but yeah. that just shows how we- welcoming most groups are, right? <laughs> yeah. They'll like yeah. actively go out of their way to try and make sure that yeah. you're like ha- having a good time and you, you feel like, oh, you're a part of the group or whatever. So Yeah, it's never like, yeah, I've, I don't think, now that I think about it, I don't, yeah, I don't know if I've ever had like an experience where like, you know, like people were mean or rude or whatever. <laughs> to and anyone not, else even. Yeah. yeah. To, yeah. Not I even necessarily that. you. I mean, even like, it's it's not because like, well, maybe because you're all Dream Guerrero or whatever. Yeah. They just treat you nicely. No, there's been times where like, I've I've been like the fly in the wall. I'd go in like, you know, to to a group um, that, you know, that I just I just read that like, oh, there's going to be a meetup and stuff. And I just like, I just go like be all incognito like because uh, <laughs> there, there was this one time i remember in um, in arizona i was watching my uh, my sister-in-law's house and um the only ukulele is this so it's not like i even had like a nice like i didn't have my custom kanileas or whatever i had whatever ukulele was laying around in my sister-in-law's house and um i remember like seeing you know me and my wife was like well what do we do we have like an entire week we're, we're house sitting you know and i'm like well on thursday they have an ukulele club and uh she's like you want to go to that I'm like, yeah, let's let's just go. It's like, well, don't people aren't people gonna recognize? Like, don't don't be like that. Like, it's fine. <laughs> just go. Just just keep quiet and stuff. Yeah, no one recognized me the entire time, which is awesome. And then I just kind of jammed and stuff, and everyone was super nice. They're like, so where are you from? Like, oh, Hawaii. You know, I just kind of jammed and stuff. I told them my name was Eddie Cortez. <laughs> That's my go-to name. Oh like, yeah, yeah, Eddie Cortez. I, like, so if you guys see a guy named Eddie Cortez at your ukulele I, group. Think twice. I hope, yeah, I hope there is somebody who's like, I know that's all dream, but he keeps saying he's Eddie Cortez. Is, is this really somebody else, or is like, is this all dream having like a mental breakdown or something, right? Like, no, I think most people are gonna be too scared to be like, you're not Eddie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're yeah, yeah. you're that guy you know, yeah, from yeah. like from the internet. Because like, because what if you know, like, I don't know. I think I'm like kind of ambiguous and in, in, uh, in Arizona there's you know like um, Asians Mexicans and I kind of look like yeah, a, yeah. like could be anything. slash Mexican could yeah. be whatever you know yeah. so uh, I didn't of course I didn't have like the hat like that's too uh-huh. obvious I didn't have like the flannel shirt that was like, way back then so I didn't have my <laughs> usual costume yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that I would wear <laughs> and stuff I, I don't think I even had a hat on and at that point like not too much people saw me without the hat without uh-huh. like the with like the emo hair or whatever and it was, uh, yeah, it was good. I was like a fly in the wall and it was just, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think people cared either. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Like, uh, my wife made, a, made such a big deal. Like, oh, you know, people are going to, it's not going to be fun because, it, you know, it's going to feel like work. People are going to like come and ask you questions and stuff and ask you to play and whatever. I'm like, no, I, don't, I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> and yeah, and it was fine. Like, yeah. that was, like, we kind of overthunk it. Like, she, like, you know, was, was overthinking like, oh, it's going to be like this, but. It went. People treated us nicely. <laughs> that's that yeah. cool. They're like, what you could like? That, that's why I'm asking. You know, or I was telling them like, um, people you know, are just gonna ask you. Yeah, know what your uke is, and I was like, oh, this is just like whatever. I think it was like a collar that she had, like, because my uh, my mother in law um, plays music for her church and stuff, and I think that was her ukulele, and she just had like some collar like laying around. <laughs> like, oh, this is cool. You know what it kind of reminds me of is like if you've ever seen a uh, car meetups, yeah, where they go and they open up their hood, right, yeah. and then people walk around and they're like, "Oh, what yeah. kind of engine do you?" Yeah, it's like the same thing because they'll, they'll not only ask you yeah. what brand you're playing or what type of wood it's made out of, they'll be yeah. like, "Oh, what what strings are you playing to?" You know, and so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. fun, man. They'll they'll go into the weeds with you. So I, I think I, I like too that like uh, I've seen where it's you know it's like uh, people are sitting at groups and they're talking and stuff 
and it's like oh they must know each other they're like getting along pretty well mm. and then you find out later it's like oh no we just met tonight you know or <laughs> yeah. something. we just sat next to each other happened to sit next to each other uh-huh. and we're playing or mm. like even i've seen like you know parents bring their kids their kids are obviously into ukulele mm. so their their kids have a ukulele and they're, they come and they start playing and then somebody just sees like the parent you know kind of just standing by the kid mm. or watching mm. and it's not like they're like oh I'm like i'm so tired of having to bring my kid here but they're just not doing anything right so the person will see them and be like oh here take my my extra <laughs> yeah and also join in and then you know they'll be like oh i don't even know how to play uke though or i don't really know how to do mm-hmm. and they'll be like oh no just follow the chords like, <laughs> yeah there's a big chord chart yeah. right at the front you know we're only playing c and f so yeah. you'll you'll get it you know it's fun like yeah. it's, it's seriously fun if, if any of you folks watching or listening have uh, I've never been to an ukulele club and have been kind of on the fence about it just go you're gonna be so much friends and stuff like it's kind of like me telling my my little kid like what she goes to like when you go to preschool you're gonna <laughs> yeah. meet all these friends and you're yeah. not gonna want to go home and so it's yeah. gonna be the same exact thing uh-huh. you're gonna go there and it's gonna be maybe for like maybe they'll say oh it's from six to seven what I expect to stay until like nine o'clock <laughs> <laughs> or ten even yeah. or maybe just not even go home at all like yeah. there's a uh, there's been ukulele uh, festival that we gone to that like people uh, like went back to the hotel at 10 o'clock and at the hotel they're still jamming like three four <laughs> yeah. in the morning you know yeah. like it's it's good fun like the, the ukulele community is is so it's so awesome I, I can't sing enough praises about the ukulele community <laughs> and everyone's super cool like um you know all, all the all the members all the teachers all the uh, you know the ukulele celebrities and whatever like they're, they're all super chill and stuff like people have like have tried to like you know like provoke me by like saying some stuff and i'm like no it's like my friend <laughs> you know like oh um i forgot but like someone was saying something about like oh um like you do you know this person i'm like oh yeah yeah you know like oh so you're probably like you know um so are, are you like like in competition with them for like for for getting sponsors and stuff i'm like i have like one sponsor like, <laughs> and that one sponsor sponsors like 200 people <laughs> or whatever, like so much people i don't i don't really care like i like that person i've you know I've, I've traveled with that person. I've like gone to that person's house and stuff. It's like, it's not like a big deal, you know? Like, so we're, we're all friends, even like ukulele teachers and stuff. It's, it was kind of weird for, for some people at first to see me like hanging out with like Cynthia and Lenny. They're like, oh, but aren't you? Know, I'm like, no, we're all teachers. Like we all just, we all love teaching people. We all love like the ukulele and just hanging out. And it's, it's cool. It's cool. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. never, I guess because like, um, there's like there's like a group of ukulele, like YouTube ukulele teachers and stuff that like kind of hang out and to see you know to see me kind of hanging out with with that group it was it's a little bit different but it's like I live in I live in like the middle of the sea you know like I <laughs> I don't have access to like um to, to ukulele teachers nearby me so but when I do it's like it's a lot of fun you know like Lenny Cynthia we got like ukulele Bart that we see all the time he's like you know he's a cool like teacher and stuff Every, like everyone James Hill. Uh, Matt, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's good fun. And there's people that like um, that have come to like to my workshops who does like ukulele, um, like ukulele, uh, like do t- teaching ukulele like on YouTube and whatnot. They like always come and, and say hi and introduce themselves and like we we trade like some uh, some stories and some uh, some facts. So which is cool. Like I've I've loved the ukulele community since day one. And I think this that's like why we still do it honestly. Yeah, because mm-hmm. the ukulele community is so good. Because uh, we've been in this uh, we've been in this industry for about I don't know like well beyond ukulele on the ground ukulele on the ground has been around since like 2007 and we're still here and that's why it's because you know we're not like like jaded or anything like oh man I'm so over this because it's like man we get to go to Denver again or we get to go to <laughs> wherever you know like yeah. oh here, let's go to Korea it's always like a warm welcome whenever we go to those places so yeah it's cool I think. Yeah, if if you like join our Friday jam and you see the chat and like yeah. people are just talking and stuff, like we've met those people in real life and that's pretty much it. Like yeah. you know, yeah. like you'll be sitting down and then uh, you know, I remember <laughs> Devin, he he just comes right up to you and he's like, you know, saying, "Ah, oh, uh, I or when we first met mm-hmm. Devin in person, you know, he came up with to us wearing a shirt with my face on it so I was like <laughs> okay right. yeah that's that's cool you know yeah and yeah that's that's who Devin is you know every time we see him he's just like uh fun to be around and joking around and yeah. doing so so it's always like that I think 
if you go to, you know, uh, yeah, it's like we uh, like 99% of groups will be great. You know, it's mm-hmm. like pretty, yeah. I can, we can guarantee that a majority of groups will be great. But if you just so happen to, you know, get a group that's like weird or sour sauce, <laughs> for reason, right? I don't understand why they would be, but yeah, I, yeah, I guess they do exist. Yeah. I, well, I was going to say that we've had like one experience, but uh, I was going to say like, if you go to a group that is for whatever reason, it, it doesn't feel like a good fit for you, then just look for another group because there's probably <laughs> yeah. more groups and they're probably like you know yeah. welcoming and they'll you'll have no problem but the the one time that we went where mm-hmm. it wasn't even like really a problem but we like we went to do like a group meetup right mm-hmm. at like a restaurant yeah and we were there and there was like a few people there and we we're kind of like are we even here at the right time or whatever <laughs> uh-huh. and later on we found out that like the group kind of broke apart or there is like problems and stuff uh-huh. but then remember it was in san diego but oh, there okay, were still okay, okay, people okay, okay. who came mm-hmm. Because they heard that we were going to be there. Yeah, and we right. ended up hanging out with them anyways. And yeah. it's like, yeah. we still had fun. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's still great. We were borderline going to cancel the thing. Because, you know, like, yeah, we weren't informed. Like, we had booked this thing uh, or uh, an appearance at this group. And um, I, I guess, like, the group, like, broke up or, like, you know, split into two or whatever happened. And mm-hmm. um, and we weren't informed. Like, nobody, <laughs> nobody told us. So we're, we're there, you know, like, uh-huh. and, um, and we're like, well, yeah, like, like a high set, like, are we at the right place? Like, I kind of see people do Colellas, but there's they, no real, like, they were, group. Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of yeah. funny because they were doing the thing where they were holding their youth, but they yeah. were, like, looking at us, right? And Everybody we're, like, else, eating yeah. and we're, yeah. like, I think <laughs> we, we can kind of guarantee that yeah. they're, they're here for the group, right? So. But it was cool. And then, like, you know, um, more and more people showed up throughout the night and stuff. And we just had a good time. Like, we, we didn't cancel it at all. We were just jamming. Like, it wasn't a, a formal, like, ukulele group where, like, you know, we, we, had, we had a leader or whatever. And then, just, like, PA system. Like, no, it was just good, good fun at, like, the, <laughs> the parking lot of whatever that, yeah. uh, that, that establishment was. It was cool. I think the the people who are looking at us mm-hmm. weren't they like a family or something? Yeah, it was yeah. like two kids and their yeah. parents or whatever. And I think even afterwards, their parents said like, "Oh, thank you! Like, we're so glad that you know we we came, but we mm-hmm. weren't sure what was going to happen, and we're yeah. so glad that like we stayed, and we're so glad that you guys like stayed and played around and mm-hmm. you know just played music because yeah, the kids were really happy <clears throat> after that." Didn't we, is that the same one where we had like a, where we set up kind of like an open mic thing where people did performances and then there's like a guy who sang the My Little Pony song? Uh, it was like his girlfriend? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I think that, so. that was, okay. Man, you, I completely forgot about that whole thing until you just brought <laughs> yeah. that just now, Kahai. Yeah. Like now all these memories are surging yeah. in. It's like, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. That was still good fun. fun. That was so much fun. That was like, it was like, it was like with Bernie guys and stuff too, like yeah. in San Diego. Yeah, that was yeah, that, that was good times. Like, <laughs> that's that's the only time that I can really think of that where it was like this is mm. kind of weird at the beginning. Like we were looking for, mm. you know, it's like are we? Yeah, are we here or is it the right time or whatever? And even then, it turned out to be like a great night at the end. So yeah, yeah. It, it, just like Daniel Tiger said, Kahai, when something seems bad, turn it around and find something good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jim, so yeah. <laughs> go Daniel Tiger. Jim mentioned that yeah. he went to uh, Ukulele the Night uh, last Friday. Yeah, and there was a lady who I guess is brand new to the UK, had only yeah. been playing for uh, seven weeks. Okay, and like she was really having fun and she was beaming, and, but her mm-hmm. only concern was if the uk she bought was like okay enough to play. And yeah, it's like yeah, yeah don't even don't worry. worry. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Nobody welcoming. will. Yeah. Like, who cares if you have like a forty dollar ukulele or a forty thousand dollar ukulele? Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, and you know, and it's not like it's not a competition of who has whatever uke or who has whatever strings or who has whatever setup and stuff. Just jam. At the end of the day, it's like, can you play these chords? Even if you can't, you know, like, are you having fun? Like, that's that's it, really. Like, it's you know, I know we've talked like for half an hour on this subject, but seriously, it's. It's so much fun. Just go out and just have yourself some fun. Yeah. Kate, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah Kate. Kate. Go, go, go have some fun. <laughs> yeah. We, we hope it's it's good for you. And we're pretty sure it will be fun. Yeah. Like if you're just, you know, open and you just go and 
whatever they're gonna do you know you just kind of go <clears> with the flow <throat> yeah uh but yeah let us know like how it was after you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah and if not you know there's always a little friday live jam <laughs> if for some reason our you, group yeah, yeah. our group a little friday live jam very welcoming <laughs> Even, like, very sarcastic sometimes in the comments but welcoming you know <laughs> yeah yeah once well it, it's fun once you like start to get into mm -hmm. the group and you learn yeah. our jam and learn like so some of the lingo some of the terms <laughs> the sense of humor <laughs> yeah you'll probably have fun too yeah. but like uh, i was gonna say like even if you go you have fun at this one too uh you'll probably find more jams in your area and mm -hmm. if you go to other jams you'll probably see the same people too because it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they all like it's it it yeah. is one big community yeah. and these people like get around where they're like I got a Wednesday jam and I got a Friday jam. <laughs> Once a week is not enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like one is yeah. one is a slacky playing, one yeah. is like Hawaiian style, one is, you know, pop music. So yeah, you'll you'll find something that will fit you and you'll have fun at. Yes, definitely. Oh, if not, open mic. We also have one of those. So come to that, like <laughs> after the one this. after the show. Yeah, <laughs> the one after the show. If you want to do a warm-up before you ukulele group, definitely come come jam with us, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kai. So and next, next question. That's, uh, a, that's a good one. That made me, that made me feel good. <laughs> Just talking about how good the U community is. Go ahead. Uh, Kristen Sue asked if you have any tips or suggestions for how to limit squeaking on wound low G string. Ooh. Uh, both hands, both the fretting hand and the strumming hand. Hmm. Switch it out in front. <laughs> yeah. Non wound. Non wound. Um, you know, like if, if you're if you're attached to that, you know, to that string and stuff, really it's it's a matter of how how much moisture is in your hands too. Because if the drier your hands are, the more squeaky the um, it's going to be. So if you have just a little bit of moisture. Um, that would be good. There's things like fast fret that you can add to add a little bit of moisture to the string that makes it a little bit better, but you'll definitely still hear the squeak. That's just the property of, you know, of ha ha having that string. And that's why I'm like, not so much anti, but like if I can help it, I won't use the, uh, like a wound string. Um, yeah, really, that's it. It's, it's all moisture. I mean, you can, because you don't want to like, Sometimes you do, but you don't want to necessarily change up your, you know, your playing just to accompany one string. You know, but if you have to, um, just be wary of the, you know, of the top string. Usually, the you know the fingers that, that touch it are like pointer and ring finger. So if you can get your pointer and ring finger all good, and uh, and kind of uh, making sure that it's uh, it's touching that string and lightly not too not too rough or you're not moving too fast or sliding too hard or anything like that but really like like i was saying you don't want to sacrifice some things and you're playing just so that you don't hear the squeak and the squeak probably um is is uh, negligible to be to be honest like there's been a bunch of players like for example uh herb Ota jr one of the most amazing most like um like softest warmest tone that you'll you know you'll ever hear and he has uh you know a wound low g string and you don't hear this the you know the squeak and when you do it's like oh well it doesn't even matter his playing is so yeah, good yeah, like, it just adds know, to yeah. the ambiance of and when you think about it, like playing. guitars you know like they they all yeah. have wound strings and it's not too bad when you know when, when they move their fingers really it's just um a combination of moisture and how you attack the string yeah That's like Classical guitars are like notorious for making that squeaking noise, right? Because most of the mm -hmm. like uh, at least three, if not four, of the strings are gonna be wound. Yeah. So no matter what you do, like you know, even just barely touching it, you're probably gonna hear like some of that, you know, squeak, squeak. Yeah. Uh, and it's just the guitarists, mm -hmm. you know, like you can listen to classical guitarists who have that, and mm -hmm. yeah, their playing is just like so magnificent that it's like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm just listening to the notes. I'm not really listening to that little quack that you hear. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, if it does bother you, um, yeah, try out, you know, try out fast fret. That might, that might help a little bit. Um, I know that kind of conditions your string also, so it's not, like, not necessarily a bad thing, but you might get gunk. You know, on your uh, on your fretboard, that might be a thing. If you're not too keen on gunk on your fretboard, maybe you know, just naturally moisture, <laughs> like moisturize, uh, moisturize your your fingers. But other than that, like that's that's it. It's just not too bad. To be honest, you don't don't worry too much about it. 
Yeah. Or or find some uh, some non wound low G strings. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of our favorites are um, uh, what's the one that, that uh, PhD. PhD PhD strings. Get yourself a uh, set of PhD strings and say goodbye to worrying about that sound. <laughs> you know, they're great. <laughs> uh, our our friends um, Jason Arimoto and uh, and Daniel Ho created mm-hmm. the, uh, those strings, and they're great. They sound awesome. Daniel Ho multi Grammy award winning, you know, ukulele player. So, you know, that he knows what he's doing mm-hmm. <laughs> as far as tone and stuff goes. Um, yeah, PhD is great. I, I have a set of um, HG Cross AQ, which are low G. They are wound, but they're not as like uh, as squeaky as um, the regular, like I guess, aluminum wound strings because they're not aluminum. I think they're plastic. It might be plastic wound. Yeah, they're, mm-hmm. they're good though. I like them. Yeah. yeah, and then there's also like uh, some options that are out there too, are like polished wound yeah, strings. Yeah, okay, yeah, polished wound, and mm-hmm. then um, also flat wound strings. Yeah. So there, there are a few companies. I, I'm, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know they have polished um, wound low G's and C or mm-hmm. C C strings, yeah. and then also yeah, flat wounds. That gives me a crazy idea. What if like. I'm gonna try it myself. <laughs> what if I take like a wound string and just like take like a 4-0 grit sandpaper and just like, like sand it out, <laughs> see if I can smooth it out and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That but work. you also don't want to sacrifice the integrity of the string. That's true. So. Well, I mean, you know, you just want to like just smooth it out. Yeah. That's why you're yeah, going yeah. like as low as possible. You <laughs> yeah. Know? Like just to smooth yeah. it out. Who knows? Maybe if you're I'll taking a wound string, but they and... make the strings already polished, so yeah. you might as well just buy that. <laughs> yeah, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna buy strings, I'm guessing and then try. The, the polished string, right, is like that. They have an industrial sandblaster that, like, when they or they, whatever, yeah, when it goes yeah. through that process, is like it's not like somebody's just standing there, like swiping, <laughs> making passes at the string yeah, to get it. That's what I was gonna say. I'm like, if I like it, and if it's like, yeah, you know, if its integrity holds up and stuff, I'll be like, hey, Mimo. Like uh, <laughs> you gotta do this, okay? Like every string that you put out there, you just gotta like take some four like just you know, just smooth it out. And then like it just it's just funny to like picture in my head like him hiring somebody <laughs> to just, well, well that's like, the thing though, right? If down. you I I don't know if they, it's still on the internet, but there are like videos of mm-hmm. Mimo creating yeah. Aquila strings mm-hmm. in the beginning mm-hmm. and he did like a ton of that stuff by, like by hand. hand he still does stuff by hand yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh you, yeah that's right I'm, when i went to italy because you were in there with me yeah i, I, did, I didn't, you were there with I didn't me get italy. to go yeah. <laughs> yeah when i went there to uh to, to italy like he still does stuff by hand like yeah. i know there's videos like when he first started but he still does it and like he showed us how he makes like violin strings and ukulele and like mm-hmm. and guitar strings mm-hmm. and stuff he's like oh it's just like this like that is that's that's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. Because um is this a third world country? <laughs> uh, well, it's kind of it's kind of insane because it's like this big thick piece of plastic thing. Uh-huh. And then like he put, you know, puts it in this machine and it full on like makes it like like thinner and thinner yeah. until like he get, he has the right, you know, the right size and then and then out comes this like a bunch of them. Uh-huh. It's it's crazy. Like I just I mean, machines in general like fascinate me, like especially <laughs> that kind where like it's a, you know, um, yeah, there's something of interest, like machines that make the things that I play with. <laughs> I like that <laughs> show wrapped or unwrapped you know, the Food <laughs> Network where they're like, this is how you make Snickers bars and stuff. And it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that where like, this is how you make strings. Like, ooh, you know that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jim in the chat said that um, Kanilea. Mm-hmm. Who makes your ukuleles? Does a tenor low G bronze wound? That's pretty quiet. So, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, I, uh, that, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say too. Is like, as much as like people try to minimize the squeak on yeah. wound strings, like it, it's pretty hard to just get rid of it altogether, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if if it truly and yeah you're gonna be the one that hears it the most so if it's not bothering you then don't care but if it if it's bothering you then yeah really consider maybe just going to unwound string just mm-hmm. so you can whenever you're playing it's not like ah I hear that squeak again you know, it's <laughs> yeah, bothering yeah. me <laughs> yeah. It, it's yeah you know even if you're sacrificing um some volume or like some projection mm-hmm. just that peace of mind might be better for you mm-hmm. in the long run. 
I remember、um, there was this recording artist who、uh, it was maybe like early two thousands and stuff where like、um, there's that like Triton like keyboard was like the the best thing that you could get and it could like、uh, basically you it could sound like any instrument that you want and it sounded so good like. Uh, they recorded this track where it's like an acoustic guitar, but it's actually like the、uh, the keyboard playing like play,、uh, playing keyboard that sounds like guitar. But it sounded so good that they had to manually add the squeaks where they、mm-hmm. should、uh, where they should be.、Yeah. And it's like it's that where like if you don't hear the squeak, it almost sounds unnatural, you know?、Mm-hmm. Where like for like a guitar yeah, for like、sound. a guitar. So、yeah. if you know if you're making a video where like the the audience sees your ukulele and you have that low G and stuff. It almost sounds unnatural. There's no squeak at all throughout the entire, you know, entire song. It's kind of like that person has some amazing control over those strings. Because, <laughs>、uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Like I've, I've never, you know, well back then, like that was that was like a, like such a new concept of like using the keyboard、yeah. as a guitar, and then、uh, yeah, they had to manually put it in there. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with、uh, VSTs now,、mm-hmm. uh, like virtual instruments now,、mm-hmm. is that you know they they made it so you can. Basically, play whatever you want, and you can play it perfectly.、Mm-hmm. And they realize, like, oh, that's what makes it not sound realistic. <laughs>、uh-huh. Too perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so they usually have a knob, right, where it's like,、yeah. okay, if it's a like a wind instrument, is like you get to hear more of the person like taking their breath. <laughs> or, like, that's insane. When it's like a piano, you hear like the creaks of like the person moving, like you know, on the piano、mm-hmm. bench and、hmm. stuff. So yeah, it's just like adding those little details in. Uh, but we have a, another question. Sure, sure, sure.、Uh, so Rick asked,、uh, "Have you guys noticed an uptick in new community members during the pandemic?" Asking as someone who came to the community during the pandemic. <laughs> um. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd say so. But I mean, like, not saying like, "Well, we got new people all the time." But like, you know, it's uh, it there's there's always going to be new people. But yes, a lot during the pandemic, and there was you know a slight、uh, slight. Increase, especially in the beginning. Yeah, when But, the, there yeah. were lockdowns. Yeah,、stuff. during the lockdowns,、yeah. that's when like people are like, I guess I'll learn ukulele. Like I've always wanted to do it, and there's nothing <laughs>、yeah. else to do in the house and stuff.、Uh, so yeah, we, you know, I, I'd say yes. But after the beginning, it was pretty much the same. You know, like the same amount of new people coming in. But、mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we we welcome everyone. So so in that case.、Um, mm-hmm. I would say give yourself a pat on the back, yeah. Because yeah. most people say like it, it was like lockdown and like oh I'm gonna learn,、yeah. and then and they they slowly like yeah. Kinda, and you're still here, yeah. If you're still here, that means that you yeah, you、job. actually learned I, and like are having fun at least, and sticking、yeah. to it, yeah. yeah. I, it's and it kind of makes sense, right? That those people who like they're <laughs> it's like. Since I have nothing else to do,、mm. I, I'm forced <laughs> to finally learn to play ukulele.、Uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You come in with that attitude. Yeah. yeah. Like, and then it, it slowly is <laughs> like, well, I mean, I'm paying for Netflix, so I, I should use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a、uh, when when we were doing like the jams and everything from. You know, each of us were like separated、mm-hmm. too, and we we're kind of doing it remotely.、Mm-hmm. That's when we saw like a lot of people jump in, and they're、mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I'm I'm brand new," and、uh, or like, since I'm staying at home so much, I decided I'm gonna try and learn ukulele、yeah. or whatever.、So. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of people who like fell off the wagon and stuff, but for the most part, there's a bunch of people that that kept at it, just like you know, just like Rick and stuff, and and I'm. I'm pretty surprised. I, I see a lot of those in the、uh, the private lessons I, and whatnot. I、mm-hmm. think my favorite is we actually saw. I mean, and we're gonna see them like in the open mic, and but we see them like every week. Is like、mm-hmm. all the kids that we had joined too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and those are the ones who have actually stuck around、mm-hmm. pretty consistently,、mm-hmm. you know. And they're they're improving like. Kind of crazy. Like every time we see them, it's、mm-hmm. we're always like, "Holy cow, you're so good!" You know,、mm-hmm. yeah. It, it's So yeah,、uh, if you you know if you start playing, if you just stick with it, you'll get better. Yeah. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And next. <laughs> next question.、Uh, uh, I think so.、Uh, Renee mentioned.、Uh, I just counted. I am in seven ukulele groups. I love them all.、Uh, best people <laughs> on the planet、yeah. play ukulele. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Denver, yeah. Like, or I mean, not Denver, but you know, like in Colorado. In Colorado. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then another one of、uh, our you know past members, but new, our friend、mm-hmm. Alan, 
he's the one the one who's like slacky yeah stuff, yeah i'm in multiple groups and then he even went on to be like i'm uh leading groups now or <laughs> yeah. like i'm teaching groups and stuff so mm -hmm. you don't have to get to that level but yeah mm -hmm. it just shows like kind of once you're once you're in it's kind of hard to get out <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're a part of the, yeah. the group now so you just go deeper <laughs> you're in colorado look for any group with group with doug brown in it it's gonna be a fun day. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah that that is exactly who else you know what i was saying like oh yeah you'll just go in and you'll you know you'll be by yourself yeah. and somebody will just come up sit ne down next to you and be like hi i'm you know yeah this is exact hi i'm doug what's your name and he'll just start shaking your hand and he's like oh i'm yeah but he had that's... a good opener though he's like let me show you my french drop guy and then he showed you his french <laughs> drop it was awesome yeah all right <laughs> we were like all just doing stuff right and then every time we did stuff we we're just like Woo! Like, <laughs> oh, to yeah. each other so he's yeah. he's the man <laughs> He's a big ball of energy, that guy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, like, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you'll, you, you'll probably run into somebody like that, mm -hmm. or just people who are friendly. Yeah. So there's, there's a Doug Brown in every, every ukulele group, I think. Not <laughs> as animated, maybe, but yeah. like, there's got to be that one guy who's very like enthusiastic about. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even Renee, right? Like yeah. the uh, first time I met Renee. Mm -hmm. She, you know, she like yelled out and then like she <laughs> ran up and then like we hugged. Yeah. But then I think she, uh, I w wish I could remember what she, she pulled out like a band or something and she's mm. like, I make these myself here. Oh. And she, she gave it yeah, to like us. Friendship right? bracelet with Renee. Mm. Oh man. I'm it was jealous. something. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could remember what it was. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, Doug Brown, I'm going to have to say, uh, Gion from, uh, from NorCal. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, just fun to kelvin hall also another very enthusiastic yeah. guy that you know that oh man hey aaron butler from this from socal uh -huh. just like all these very enthusiastic people so good so yeah. good <laughs> yeah. yeah okay yeah, uh hey I, I don't think we have uh, another question but i was gonna mention mm -hmm. uh we we're talking about the open mics here. yeah 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 uh and we have a new rule for the open mic right mm -hmm. where uh each person is getting two uh, songs yeah and it's like uh we we said like we we mentioned in previous weeks it's like a set list mm -hmm. uh and we said like oh it's good practice to you know make your own set list and stuff yeah but what about that like uh do you have tips for people mm. who are, are so gonna try and you know do uh, the do the open mic two song set list or like a set list for like 15 how, yeah 20 or how about we start with uh, the open mic set list for people mm -hmm. who are watching who mm -hmm. are going to join after. And then we talk about, um, you know, like if you're going to do like a full hour, how mm -hmm. would you plan out a set list? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so let's start with the two. You know, two, it, it just means that you have two tries to make, you know, to connect with the audience as best as you can. To, um, not just to kind of like, oh, I want to play my best two songs, but if those two songs don't connect, you know, like if they're really good songs, but if they don't connect with the audience, then it's not the best two songs, you know, like you want to figure out what the audience wants to hear and how the audience can best see you and your ability not just ability like to play and stuff but you as a you know as a person so make sure you know uh, as a performer i always make sure to introduce myself regardless if it's an open mic if it's whatever i always introduce myself tell people a little bit my about you know about me just so that they have an idea of who's on stage and that can you know that can open up the gates to uh to some kind of connection with the audience okay don't make it go for like longer than I don't know, like a few minutes. Like the <laughs> introduction shouldn't be longer than like, "Hi, I'm Aldrin. You know, I'm from Kauai, and I've been playing ukulele for a little bit. I'm gonna share some songs with you folks. I hope you guys like it." Like that's it. That's like my <laughs> that's my opener. Or um, you know, every Wednesday night, it's like, "Hello, everyone, and welcome to Oasis. We're called the Knights of Acoustica. We're gonna be playing, you know, till about the seven o'clock hours. So kick back, relax, and enjoy." That's it. <laughs> and like, yeah. okay, we're gonna do a little uh, a little sound check to so make sure everything sounds okay. And then that, then we start playing our, you know, I start playing our first song because if we tell people that our first song is just a sound check, and if you know if it sounds terrible, because you know we don't know if it yeah. sounds good, it really is a sound check. But that's for a two hours set, so I'll talk about that in a little bit. But for a two song set, what I would do um, personally, and you can do this any which way that you want to. Personally, I would do a um, break the ice song. 
It doesn't have to be a slow song. It doesn't have to be a fast song. It just has to break the ice. It has to like be something that either the audience recognizes, can sing along to, um, uh, or a song that you feel like is your like is your specialty. You know, as as a as a chef would call it, like only it's it's to you. You know, your specialty. Can- uh, can you give examples of songs yeah. that you would count as break the ice? Okay, well, you know, um, I always I always start off a, a set with with a song like uh, "Lay Down Sally," where like people have it's recognizable, but it's also a specialty of mine because I start with the uh, with the theatrics already. You know, like I start with like the the super fast strumming and whatever, but it is a song that they still recognize. And there's some really like, really cool stuff where you do the double strumming and and, and just. Uh, it's a lot where I think I, I go off the the you know the, the frets, so that's like a great uh, good thing for me. But like I said, it doesn't even have to be like a uh, a fast song. It doesn't have to be a slow song either, um, because you can you know you can start things off with um, uh, let's see what's what's another good start. Well, we you know we uh, we do our sound check with how can I get over. It's not a recognizable song, but you know once you hear the riff. It's a rip, like a repetitive enough riff that like the audience would be like, yeah, I can get into this, you know, like it's <laughs> it's cool. But it's not a song that everyone knows, you know. So it doesn't have to even be a recognizable song, but it helps, you know. Like if um if we uh, if we start off our set with a like just those three notes along, <laughs> one, two, three, like people are like, okay, cool, I'm in, <laughs> you know, like I know this, or one. <laughs> like oh someone's playing that song again, but you know, like. But you're gonna do it so well that those people are like, hey, you know, that was not bad. Yeah, <laughs> like that, yeah, yeah. I've heard people play that song, and that was not bad. Like so, it, it's it's about that, about like capturing the audience's attention because it's your first song. You know, like if you capture them with uh, with your first song, then most likely they will stick around and listen to your second song. And your second song can be anything that you want to leave them wanting more. Okay, like for example. Um, my uh, a second song that so I'll do something like uh, like lay down Sally for a first song, and then a second song if I wanna you know like uh, if I wanna really connect to the audience and, and like promote who I am, I'll play maybe like an uh, original instrumental. Like I'll do that to be like okay, well if you guys want more, here's my Spotify or whatever. But if it's like you know just just for fun, I'll do something like uh, like body surfing or like purple rain or like. Um, uh, Benny and the Jet, like stuff like that, where like you know people will be like, okay, that was, that was fun. Like the first song, he got me. Then the second song, I was like, oh, I want more. I want to see more. You know, like that's kind of, that's kind of what you want. And I'm not saying you have to play those kind of songs because it can be anything. So, um, like for example, um, play like Here Comes the Sun as your first as your first song. That opening riff of people are like, oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing the thing I like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, for uh, for your second song, it can be it can be anything. Like, um, preferably something that you know that that leaves the audience kind of wanting more, or like a sing along that'd be kind of cool. You know, like any like anything really that that best showcases you as a, as as a musician or whatever. You know, putting your best foot forward and uh, and leaving the audience with that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that so it's tough because you only have two songs to do so, but. Um, for the most part, as long as you know you you bring it on stage, because it can be like two mediocre songs. But if you go on stage and you have like the stage presence and the um, and the connection with the audience, those two mediocre songs can be like the best two songs. Yeah. you know? I, I think it's it's definitely uh, personal to you too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, don't feel like oh, okay, Aldrin listed these songs. So yeah, that's yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. the songs I'm gonna. Play. I'm just giving examples, you know, yeah. like just examples of what what I do, like with my set and stuff. But really, it's whatever you know, whatever fits your repertoire, you know, of of those kinds of songs or those like uh those kinds of um uh like characteristics for the songs, you know, it doesn't have to be fast. It just has to connect. Really, that's that's the best. That's my best. Um, advice to anyone doing any kind of live performance is connecting with your audience because as soon as you go live that means someone's listening and if someone's listening you you know like you want to be you don't want to just be like background music you know asked to be background music and then i just refuse to be background <laughs> music because you know like you're you're there i mean for me my philosophy is like uh, as a live musician, I don't want to be background music because you can just play an album, you can just play a CD or put Spotify on and be the same exact thing. So what am I doing here? You know, 
Um, so for a 15 minute set, it's basically the same thing, but ba uh, the first and second song on your two song set, just think of that as your first and last song for a 15 minute set. And you have maybe one or two songs in between of that 15 minute set, depending on how short or long your songs are. Uh, 30 minute set, um, I would think of the first and second in my two song set as either my first and last song or first and middle song. And there's an even bigger bang right at the end. So I always have like, a, uh, a, a strong opening maybe of three four songs for the um, you know for the first half an hour slow it down a little bit just to give the audience a little bit of time to breathe so it looks like this and then it gives a little bit of breathe and then like go up a little bit higher during the middle so that's usually when I'll play something like Europa or um, uh, that's when Purple Rain will come in or like um, Drift Away by Dobie Gray stuff like that and then like you can settle it down a little bit but not too much and then just go skyrocket for like the last 15 minutes of like, man, that was, you know. So there's there's some breathing points in, in the hour show and same thing for a two hour show. That's that's really how, how I plan things out. But also, if you're in a one hour or two hour show, um, gauge the audience. Like if the audience is enjoying themselves or if the audience like, you know, is is not paying attention or whatever, give them, hit them with something that, that they will pay attention. It's like, I'm, <laughs> the, you know, I'm the show or whatever, whatever you want to do. And like, you're, you're probably like, oh, that was, that was a little bit conceited. Aldrich. But no, you, you have to have that mentality on stage. You have to have that, like, like kind of the, like a general of the stage, you know, like, uh, I'm, yeah, <laughs> Willie K. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. the Willie K. Willie exactly. K was the yeah. best. Yeah, you know, like you have to be up there and you have to command the stage, yeah. really. Like, and, um, if you don't, it shows. And the thing is, like you, you know, you learn to uh, to have that kind of commanding um, act on stage. Like you don't. Of course, your first few times on stage is not going to be like that. But you know what? Just think of it as like as basic training <laughs> before uh -huh. you know before you become a general. Become the general. Yeah, <laughs> general. If uh, if you want to know, I mean, I know you know he gets uh, a lot of people are like oh, I don't I don't know and stuff. But if you ever watch that This Is It by by that Michael Jackson documentary mm -hmm. and stuff, um, watch how he like like commands his um his touring group of like not just dancers not just the musicians but everyone like he knows exactly what is happening at what point in what song and if someone's not doing it right and like michael gets mad <laughs> you know like it's michael jackson knows exactly what goes on in that stage and he controls it like a general and that's why i always use that like he's like the general of that stage because mm -hmm. he has his army of you know music makers and and rump shakers you know to uh to to entertain you and um if you're playing as a solo then you have to kind of be a general to yourself you have to make sure that you're prepared you have to have the right artillery you know to uh to to make sure that everyone has a good time really that's that's my best advice <laughs> it's fun but don't forget to have fun because really that's what it is and um mm -hmm. i tell people this a lot when people come up to us like after the show and stuff like oh that was you know that was a good show or whatever and we'll i'll just tell them like hey you know like especially like oasis shows and stuff um which we play at every wednesday here on koi i'll just tell them that like it worked technically at work <laughs> you know what well, might as well have fun like it's either you have a uh, junk time at work or you have a good time at work so i try to make every you know every time i'm at work quote unquote to be like super fun so that it doesn't feel like it yeah yeah uh yeah i was gonna also say too mm -hmm. that uh we you know we told people for the open mic to get two songs mm -hmm. prepared mm -hmm. but uh yeah like don't feel like you have to stick to those two songs mm -hmm. too right because you like, might get called on after yeah if, it, if we don't have enough people yeah or like you know if you're playing you play your first song mm -hmm. and you're like oh that went pretty well or like oh mm -hmm. I, you know whatever and you know another song and you have that you know you you can also you know you can play that song yeah and you're kind of feeling the mood and you're like i think even though i have this other song prepared that i thought i was gonna do but i i can play this other song and i it just feels right for this particular song just go with your gut feeling and go with like you know what you think at the time mm -hmm. will play well because mm -hmm. like yeah that's, <laughs> that's that's how Aldrin does it yeah, for every is, gig. Yeah, every gig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have we come in with a plan, but if if it's like oh you want to hear that yeah we, we got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, I I feel like 
open mics are a little bit different. So mm. like if I was to do a two song set where I was hired to be there, mm. I would choose songs different than I would That's for, it, for yeah, an for open mic. Show. Because oh, yeah. I remember yeah. like when it was before we started Ukulele Underground, mm. um, we were going to the open mic at Volcano Joe's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, so I that was would, my training grounds. <laughs> yeah. So I would go into the, the open mic with a like a different mindset mm. like instead of doing sort of like the the layout that you yeah. had yeah um that would be something like if i was hired for to play mm. some f- some music i would ramp it up you know in mm. the same way mm. but like for the open mic i was thinking of it more like i would i would start off with a song that i knew pretty well mm. and i knew that like audiences generally liked mm. or like you know like it's not something that i liked and yeah. i thought the audience would enjoy mm. and then and then once i established that okay i can play music <laughs> they know that i can play music mm. then my second song would usually be something that i'm working on and then i just want to like try it out mm. like because the, the audience is on board already. Yeah, they're like, oh, we and know they, what you can play. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah. won't judge me. You, you just kind of preempt yeah. You, you yeah. kind of say on, on the microphone, like, mm-hmm. oh, um, here's something I'm working on or here's, mm-hmm. here's a song that I, I'm, I'm writing now mm-hmm. and I just want to get you guys' reaction yeah. and, um, and talk to me after the show or after I'm, I'm mm-hmm. done and, and give me some feedback because I would like that. Yeah. You know? And so, so I sort of use my second song as mm-hmm. like a, well, like, they already know what I can play, so mm-hmm. like I'm just gonna throw this one out there because mm-hmm. it's a good chance like to t- test out this song, mm-hmm. see if I can actually pull it off in front yeah. of people, and like they won't judge me mm-hmm. because they kind of know already <laughs> that yeah. I can play, right? So, yeah, that's that's good too. Just you know, just get the um the the common thread is the audience. I always think about like you know the audience, yeah. and who you're playing for and yeah. stuff. That's. That's really it, you know. If if you satisfy the audience, that's that's the goal, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like for uh, for people to have a have a good time with your music, you know. Yeah, and then yeah. open mics too. Like you know, even if you mess up, mm. like the don't worry they're about it. they're yeah. not there to heckle you or no, anything. No, they're no, no. they're sitting at an open mic. They don't expect it to be like <laughs> perfect, right? <laughs> if like, they're like in suits and tie, like yeah. oh, I oh. thought this was. <laughs> I paid way too much <laughs> yeah. okay, to, no to be here. The, the other thing to think about, like with at least with our open mic, mm. right, is I would say probably half the people at our open mic are also there to play, right? Mm-hmm. So while you're playing, uh, they're probably listening and they're having fun and they're enjoying it. But in their back of their head, they're probably thinking, oh, no, it's like my turn is going to come up. Well, like, am I, you know, they're thinking about themselves playing too so you know if you mess up it's not gonna stick to their their you know they're not gonna remember it they're thinking about because they're too worried about like what they're how they're gonna perform too yeah so and then also like you know if somebody else messes up then they're gonna they're gonna clap and support them because like you know when i go on stage i I people just clap for me i hope people (laughs) yeah i hope people support me too even if i mess up so yeah just keep going if you mess up just keep going who cares or you can even build it into the thing you know like yeah it's uh yeah, that that's been something that we do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Even today, I played twice last night. Yeah, I forgot what, which. Do you remember what happened last night? Uh, I was like, I guess that's how it is now. <laughs> it was it was a song that we played like pretty often, and I just missed the chord <laughs> oh, twice. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about another. But yes, that one. That's I'll be your baby today. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot, like, <laughs> I, for one chord, I temporarily forgot what key yeah. we were in. Mm-hmm. And then I did it again <laughs> <laughs> at the same part because I was overthinking it. Yeah, so. don't worry, but it was okay. Like, in the audience didn't Nobody care. cared. Yeah, nobody cared. Nobody yeah. cared. It was cool. So, it was yeah, just have a good I, time, really. Yeah, when when I w- went to watch you guys, mm-hmm. there, I mean, it's, you know, you guys, it's not really like a mess up, but there's just something where yeah. I think... Like you missed a slide or something, yeah. And for sure, like <laughs> you know, when when you do that during the jam, like yeah. I feel like we we all like look at each other, like oh yeah, we saw that. <laughs> and so I looked, and sure enough, you like you and Aaron were looking at each other, and I, yeah. I was just like smiling. But then yeah. I looked over to everybody else in the restaurant, and nobody yeah. else cared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's always how it is. So yeah, always always check out your audience. My favorite audience moment. 
um, when I was starting out, like I just started playing like body surfing and I just started kind of figuring out how to like make that song really like, you know, explosive. Um, is, is the audience members that are just like talking like this and all of a sudden it's like, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite audience reaction. Like, <laughs> we're doing this, you know, where I'm eating right now or whatever it may be. And then all of a sudden they stop everything they're doing and then they do one of these. Yeah. I live for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Live for that moment. It's my favorite moment in the entire show where like, okay, this, this, this guy's got my attention. I'm listening now, you know, <laughs> yeah. like stopping everything that I'm doing, watching this guy. It's cool. Yeah, there's a couple that comes to they <laughs> comes to Kauai for yeah. like six months out of the year, mm-hmm. and they watch us at every show that yeah, that they're every here. Every Wednesday, and I think that's their favorite moment too. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. watching everybody. Yeah, because usually you'll you'll do your first couple opener songs, and then you'll do like an instrumental. Once mm-hmm. you hit the instrumental, it's usually something that that evokes that reaction yeah. and so they're like waiting they know what's gonna happen already they've been to enough shows they like look around and then see see the other tables if yeah. they turn or not and i think i think they'll they'll gauge the audience too yeah. based off of that it's fine it's fine yeah so there there you have it that's that's our formulas for uh for short sets and long sets that's you know if you if you ever watch this live and we're playing a 45 minute show or something at a festival you're like watch this he's gonna slow it down now. Like, it's yeah it's been a couple songs now so he's gonna slow it down hey. and then it's the right in the middle he's gonna ramp it up he's gonna yeah. play europa maybe he guarantee he's gonna play europa. he'll probably <laughs> play this song <laughs> we we and we talked about uh our open mic right like mm-hmm. to use it as a uh, practice for mm-hmm. making a set list and stuff mm-hmm. but if you also don't want to like think about it that hard and you're just like I just want to play these two songs because it's fun for me. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, that's perfectly fine too. We're not, <laughs> yeah. we're not holding you to it. We're not gonna. We'll have our our, our yeah. scoreboards there, and um, oh, yeah. I see th- this song selection seven point <laughs> uh, Your performance was very good, but uh, I would disagree with the song selection. We're not gonna do that, right? Like, no, we're, we're just happy that you're playing. So yeah, you were yeah. good, but not quite Simone Biles good. Just... <laughs> uh, you could have picked a better opening song. Uh, yeah, no. that's that's gonna be a tenth yeah. of a point off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't worry. Just have fun, really. Okay, so uh, we'll see everyone in just a little bit at the open mic. But um, we do have a brand new lesson out today with our very good friends. Speaking of friends in the ukulele community, Mr. Steve in Espanola. We did a classic um, that that a bunch of people in Hawaii should recognize. That's just one of those like very recognizable songs that Kapena has, has done throughout the years. We're very very big fans of uh, of Kapena, Kelly Boy, and like the entire family and stuff. So. We did a uh, we, we did a kind of a tribute you know song for them so blue darling slash I'll be leaving um, that's their arrangement of those two songs Stephen killed it with the uh, with the vocals and the and the falsetto ah just he's his <laughs> voice is so angelic <laughs> I was um. I was trying to sing along with him today just to see if I could reach those same notes. Not as good as Steven. <laughs> Not as good as Steven. He's so good. So make sure you check that out. And speaking of which, if you guys live in Hawaii and you guys haven't checked it out yet, but um, Kapena does, or he just, uh, or they, or Kelly Boy just opened up the uh, Kapena School of Music. So if you guys are interested in checking that, or if you're like coming down to Oahu for like, you know, for a week or whatever, book yourself for like a, uh, a, class or or a a lesson with uh with with kelly boy he's he teaches over uh on oahu now check out the kapena uh school of music that just opened up this past weekend so it's brand new and um yeah learn a song or two from one of the legends of uh of of the hawaiian music business it's really 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 cool do you know where on oahu it is uh i think windward mall yeah because they're next door to to kanilea kanilea's shop so, so Windward Mall, um, check them out. I think they might do walk-ins. I don't, I'm not sure. You know, this, this is so new. I don't have all the information and stuff, but I just wanted to let people know this. It, I think it's like, uh, I don't know if they do virtual stuff, but I know definitely they do like, um, you know, in, in-person kind of classes yeah. and whatnot. So if you're ever in town, like that's, you know, learn one from the legends. That's, we always encourage people to learn as much as possible. And that's like definitely one teacher you might want to learn from. So yeah, yeah some uh, one of our students went to the one of their classes or mm-hmm. one of Kelly Boy's classes. Yeah. So and I think they, I'm not sure if they're doing it currently, but 
they're also planning like Hawaiian stuff too, right? Cool. Like not yeah, just that's awesome. Yeah. So so yeah. brush up on your Hawaiian. Brush up on your uh, on your pigeon because <laughs> uh, Kelly boy talks some pretty pretty <laughs> yeah. thick pigeon, pigeon. English. <laughs> so yeah. brush up on your pigeon English. If you're not, if you listen to people speaking pigeon and you're like, well, I don't know. It was like, maybe don't go there for your first lesson. But <laughs> I'm sure if you go, you'll, you'll still have fun. You'll still have fun. Yeah. yeah it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you'll learn something. So make sure you check that out. But like I said, brand new lesson, um, from, from Capena, from you know, one of our, one of our heroes. So make sure you check that out. Uh, I, what else, what else is new, Kai? Um, it's going to open mic tomorrow, Aloha Friday Live Jam. But yeah, just keep it locked in here in Ukulele Underground. we got some great stuff for you this week, okay? We'll see you in just a little bit for the open mic. Aloha.